Hello and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Ryan. I'll be conducting your class this morning. Well, this morning for me. Uh, today's topic is something very interesting in the animal kingdom. That is about killer bees or Africanized bees. Uh, there is a news report recently of a couple in Texas who were attacked by a swarm of these bees. So we're going to learn a little bit more about them. Uh, it's going to be also a chance to learn some vocabulary and have a discussion about uh, animals and uh, dangerous creatures. So it, it's going to be a fun time. We look forward to hearing all of your comments. Just got to pause my other window here. So just before we get started, as we wait for students to come on into the classroom, I'll just draw your attention to a couple of points. Uh, first of all, you'll notice in the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen, we've got uh, my teacher page on Verbling, a link there. So feel free to go to that page and click follow, and then you can keep up with my classes. Uh, before, uh, below that, we have a link to my Facebook page. And uh, there you're able to post comments and uh, keep track of what my upcoming classes are. Sometimes I'll post a question for you as uh, students to get your input. So I'd love to hear from you there. And uh, finally, as we're going through the class, it would be a good idea for you to keep your mic on mute. You'll see up in the top right-hand corner a little microphone uh, icon. And when you click that, it turns red. That shows that you're muted. And that way, any background noise in the room where you're taking your class won't affect the other students. And each one can just unmute themselves when it comes time for them to speak. So all of that out of the way, let's get started with our class. We have our first student who has joined us. And it is Selma. Hello, Selma. Uh, hello, teacher. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, not better. I see I see you've changed your profile picture. Is that you in the picture? I am exactly. <laughs> so where was that taken? It was taken the in in the sea just next to the to the town next to us I mean. <laughs> so you live near the sea? Uh, yes, about one hour, one hour and a half. Oh, that's great. Do you travel mm -hmm. there uh, for, do you visit the ocean a lot? Uh, no, we don't have the ocean, we just have the sea. Okay, okay, so you like to go to the water, mm -hmm. is there is there a spot there where people can have picnics and play and things like that? Uh -huh, we have some golden beaches. And we also have some places when you can uh, do some uh, cliff jumping. So it's an interesting place to be in. Okay, very good. And just correct me if I'm wrong, did you tell me you live in Algeria? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. I'm slowly starting to remember where everybody is located. <laughs> well, Sama, <laughs> great to have you here with our class. Also, we have got Juanjo. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you, Ryan. How are you? I'm I'm good as well. Yes. Although I had to get up really early this morning. I got up at uh, quarter to five. Okay. So <laughs> I'm I, I was kind of sleepy when I got up, but I'm awake now. I've got my cup of coffee here. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, Juanjo, tell me, how was your weekend? Oh, uh, my weekend has been excellent. Has been excellent. Because... What did you I, do? Uh, I was uh, visiting uh, Northern Ireland, Ireland uh, concretely uh, Giant's Causeway. It's an uh, extraordinary and amazing... Uh, nature place when you can check it out in, in uh, on internet uh -huh. it's, uh, because the rocks you know uh, or the stones are uh, geometrical oh uh, that sounds interesting the, the, the form of uh, that um, uh, stones are uh, almost uh, geometrical it's uh, it's amazing hey and, what 
why don't you find us a picture and then you can screen share it with us ah, so sure. we can we can have a look yeah in the during, during the class okay yeah I mean in the meantime <laughs> we'll go and welcome Alberto into the class how are you doing today Alberto hello I'm fine thank you good nice to have you with us is this your first class with me yes yes sure you have uh, another time <laughs> What, one other time? No, no, no. But you have uh, another, another times, another hours for difficult hours for me. Yeah. But oh, okay. You live in the United States, I suppose. I'm in the Dominican Republic, actually. Well, in America, yeah. And then I, I live in Europe, and it's difficult to to join the the time. Okay, hours okay. So tell us where you're from, then, Alberto. When I live in Vitoria, in the north of Spain, and uh, well, I am 45, um, I am trying to, to improve my English. Okay, good. So, have you been with Verbling for a while? Yeah, uh, for two or three months, yes. Okay, so how's it going? Well, uh, I feel better, but uh, I am uh, bad uh, with uh, well, with vocabulary and bad uh, speaking, but I'm improving. <laughs> okay, you know this kind of conversation. It may take it takes a little bit of time, but uh, it certainly does help with vocabulary. The more yeah. you hear it, sure. The more you the more you practice it in this way. I mean. It's great to take a textbook and open it up and study, but yeah. there's nothing that compares with with talking, speaking yeah, with sure. others. So that's sure. great. So what did you do on the weekend? Well, uh, I've uh, I've stayed at my mother-in-law house, uh, the countryside, and uh, it was a quiet place, and uh, the family were there, and well. Were reading or walking only okay. only this. So it was kind of like a nice quiet weekend. Yeah, relaxing weekend. Oh, that's good. We need that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Juanjo, it looks like you found us some pictures. Can you look at the look at that? I, I see. Let's see. I've mm -hmm. got some small pictures here. Some thumbnails. The Giant's Causeway. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. Causeway. Let what? me see if I can load a big picture. I will What's try to put another, uh, another link, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let me turn on my screen share here. Whoops. The last one. So, yeah. okay, so I see what you mean yeah, you here. <laughs> It's got these, uh, they almost look like hexagons, the yeah. shape of each it's, stone. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a, uh, wow, awesome place. So did you learn why the stones have this shape? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was uh, reading uh, on the internet, um, but there, there are uh, some different uh, uh, stories about it. For example, one of the uh, stories are legend, like uh, uh, with two um, mythologists, I don't know the name, mythology, like, uh, like Ge mythology. Ge geologists. Not, not geology, I don't know how to explain. Uh, uh, you know, in the ancient uh, Greece and the ancient Rome, mm -hmm. uh, there was a uh, heroes, heroes and uh, oh, gods, myth mytho know? mythological. Yeah, this is the <laughs> the word. <laughs> gotcha, mythological. Yes, mythological. Okay. Yeah, and uh, a, a, sto a story is a mythological uh, legend, you know, between two big heroes in the ancient. <laughs> okay, okay. So they felt this was like the result of some kind of battle between two... Yeah, it's more or less uh, that, that type of story. And I don't know, uh, the reason it's uh, difficult to explain how, how it's 
or how these stones are uh, so uh, geometrical. It's uh, mm -hmm. how they are so uh, yeah for uh, for uh, include for experts. It's difficult. Well, I, I would love to see that someday. I hope to get there. Um, Selma, have you ever been to Ireland? Have you seen these stones before? Well, for me, it's the first time I see such stuff. Uh, we don't have this one in my country, so it's surprising to see such shapes. It looks like the hives are the bees. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It does. It looks like a honeycomb. And that is a perfect... Ah, uh, oh, honeycomb, okay. <laughs> yeah, honeycomb. Let me put that in the chat box. What a great thing to notice, Selma, because we're talking about bees today. Fantastic. You guys are fantastic okay. students. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you a picture, and I really want to get your opinion on this picture, okay? Here we go. Now... Let's start with uh, Alberto. <laughs> oh my God. What on earth is going on in this picture, Alberto? Uh, we can see bees, but not uh, the person. <laughs> yeah. Only bees. Yeah. You have to 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 be uh, brave to to do that. Because I'm, I'm not sure. I, well, well, I'm not sure. Not. Uh, I'm sure that I'm not able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Brave. You use the word brave to describe. Them. Anybody else have any other words you might use to describe these individuals? Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, Juanjo, you read my mind. You read my mind. <laughs> Selma, what do you have to say about about this picture? Uh, it's kind of uncanny for me. I think that uh, these bees are not that harmful. That's why. That's why the people are, are still alive. Yeah, I, I think they must be like very mm -hmm. tame, very calm bees. But uh, mm -hmm. that would be terrifying for me to go through. Uh, a little bit creepy. Maybe that would be the, uh, the word I would use. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. say but walk, walkie or... What type it in the chat box? What what word did, were you thinking of? Okay. Um, this one. Wacky. Mm -hmm. Hey, that is a good word. Very good. Yes. Okay. So if you guys think that this picture is a little bit crazy, tell me what you think about this next one. What do you think, Selma? Would you do that? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Okay, good word, good word. Juanjo, you got anything? Whoa. <laughs> Disgusting is okay, and... Uh... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are either of you allergic to bees by any chance? In my case, I don't, uh, I don't uh, allergic. I'm not allergic. You're, you're not allergic. How about you, no, Selma? No. Uh, not at all. Mm, it's the same for me. I'm not allergic to, to the bees. Okay, I'm a little bit allergic to them. Like if I get a sting, I will my like on my arm or something, it will swell up. But I won't. I've never been stung, and I had to go to the hospital or anything. But I still would not do this. This would not be my favorite pastime. And yet, if you Google beard of bees, Google images, there is just hundreds of people who have done this, which is astounding. 
But these are not the kind of bees we're going to talk about today. Uh, these are, are just ordinary honeybees. We are talking about something called killer bees or Africanized bees. Have either of you ever heard of, of them before? Uh -huh. I've read an article about them last two weeks. You read about them in National Geographic? Uh, I'm not sure about, I can't remember the results, but I read them on the internet. So I think in a uh, magazine, certain magazine, but I cannot remember. Okay, okay, so you mm -hmm. know something about them. What, what do you remember from what you read? Uh, I know that <laughs> they are very dangerous and they can uh, they can uh, attack you all of them I mean all the hive can of the bees can attack you not like the European ones uh, and they also they can kill you in moments and if you just go to and jump to the sea or the lake you should uh, they they can wait you until you uh, you go out of the lake to get some to breathe right so, and then they can kill you yeah uh, pretty scary stuff when you when you think about that um, I notice we have a new mm -hmm. new class member hello Jose how are you I think your microphone is muted Jose hello Hello, 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 hello. Hey, hello. hey, hey, yeah, we got you now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got me. I was just fiddling about with this, actually. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, good. Where are you from? From Spain. I lived in the UK for a bit of time. I'm yeah, from Spain. I, where? I'm hearing the accent. What, the Spanish one or the UK one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be offended, but at first I thought it was Australian. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Well, there's loads of UK people in Australia, so there you go. So where are you guys from then? Well, I am in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Juanjo, you want to tell Jose where you're from? I'm from Spain as well. Hola. <laughs> ¿Qué tal? <laughs> muy bien, muy bien. And, and Selma? I'm coming from Montreal. Hello. <laughs> So, uh, and we have, I don't know, one of our other students has popped out of the class. Hopefully he'll be back. That's Alberto. And anyone else that's, that's watching and listening in, hopefully they'll join us. So, um, Jose, we're talking about, as you can see from the picture, bees, but specifically Africanized bees or killer bees. Have you heard of these? Yes, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't know the facts. I mean, I know the killer bees, but I don't know if you need five hundred to kill you, or, or just one will kill you. But I suppose they're more poisonous than, than the rest of the bees that we have. Well, at least here in Europe, but I don't have real, you know, I don't, don't have many facts. I could Google it, but nah. yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Well, what we're going to do today is uh, first we're going to start with a short YouTube clip that's going to give us a little bit of background on some of the environmental impact that uh, these these bees are having and uh, then since this is an English class we're going to go take a little look at an article and some new vocabulary and practice it together so um, let's go to a YouTube clip first of all and uh, you'll notice on the left hand side of your screen the applications one of them says YouTube just go ahead and click that and then I'll load in our YouTube clip um, just bear in mind that once the clip starts don't pause it or restart it because everybody will get affected by what you do with your uh, YouTube application so just go ahead and click that app and if you don't see it in the left hand slot click view more apps and it should should pop up in a separate window
should be the current video. Okay, everybody, hopefully you were able to watch that clip and uh, maybe th take down some notes or at least put in your mind some of the main ideas of the clip. So um, why don't we start with Alberto. Um, where did these Africanized bees come from? How did they get into South America? Yes, uh, they were. Uh, they they came from uh, Africa. Correct, but what was the process that led to them multiplying in South America and stretching up into uh, the United States? I don't know. I suppose uh, because of uh, tourism or uh, something uh, was uh, was uh, gotten from Africa to to South America. I don't know why I have uh, not understand uh, understood anything in in the in the video about this. 
Okay, you didn't catch that point. That's okay. Yeah. Um, how about you, Juanjo? Did you notice or did you catch what they said about the origin of these these bees? Well, I'm not sure if in the video they mentioned it. Uh, well, maybe I I haven't catched it. <laughs> okay. Well, it was just a brief mention. It's it's something that happened in 1957 mm. in Brazil. Selma, did you hear that point? Uh, I think yes. When they were doing some uh, research, I think about these uh, bees, and uh, and then the, uh, these bees escaped from the uh, the honey comb. Exactly. They were doing some scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. In fact, what they wanted to do is the African bee produces a great deal of honey compared to the the native bee of North and South America. So what they wanted to do was mate the two together. They wanted to have the kind and docile nature of the native bee but the hard-working production of the African bee. So that was what the experiment was all about. Unfortunately, these this experiment did not work. The bees were very aggressive and then they escaped into the environment and multiplied very quickly. So, um, Jose, what effect is this having on the ecosystem? Um, <laughs> it's pushing. It's pushing the the ordinary bee, the local bee. Well, the local, as <laughs> it's all in America, but the African bee is pushing the other bee. So the effect is having that it, it's taken over. Would it be good or not? That is something we don't know. But this is something that I think is a. Uh, Nature is that way, and it always happens this way. So things move on, and um, and actually, what 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 they were saying, I wasn't really looking at it, but I was listening. What they were saying is that they do not know what the final effect will be, but it is definitely pushing the um, the bee that they used to have over there is getting pushed by the by the African people. Okay, very good. Yes, Alberto, did you notice? why this bee is causing such a problem for the other species in the rainforest? What is it doing? When they, they are uh, aggressive against the, the other bees, uh, the, the American bees, then uh, they, they kill them and well, it's a mess about, about the origin of uh, bees. Okay, so it's partly their nature, being very aggressive, um, easily agitated. Um, Juanjo, did you notice something else that he said the African bees were doing? What were they consuming? Uh, uh, well, they... I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I think the same, like uh, other... Bees. Uh, okay. They 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 are uh, growing up uh, thanks to plants or. Okay, so um, in any ecosystem, whether it's a forest, a rainforest, a jungle, um, there's a certain amount of resources and food available for the creatures, right? Mm -hmm. And so when another species that doesn't belong there enters into that ecosystem and starts to multiply and it maybe has no natural enemies in that ecosystem, mm -hmm. what happens to the food supply for them? Selma, did you notice that point? I'm not sure I caught that point, but I think that uh, what I heard is that they they can damage the rainforest, and well, that's all. <laughs> okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Um, he talked about certain other species that are being affected by this Africanized bee. Did you? Did anyone hear some of the the animals that he mentioned? The human being. 
<laughs> well, you do. Okay. I mean, what, what actually impressed me is that I think he said that this speed could actually chase a human being for a quarter mile. Yes, That's that was lot. that. He did say that. that. So Indeed. the human being is affected, obviously, and he, he is a species. So there you go. <laughs> All right, we will accept your answer. Thank, Thank you, you, Jose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, he talked about not only other honeybees, but birds, bats, and butterflies. They all need the same resources in the rainforest. And so these Africanized bees taking over has really affected them a lot. Uh, towards the end of the clip, he mentioned as well, what are they finding when they look for the hives of the native bees? What is happening to their hives? Alberto, did you notice? No, not really. But they suppose uh, they. Uh... We've lost your microphone, Alberto. Yeah, I I didn't notice. I didn't notice about this. Okay, okay. Juanjo, did you see? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, I think uh, they will survive or. Maybe they will adapt uh, in the ecosystem. That's what they're hoping. Um, Selma, did you notice though what what when they find some of the hives of the native bees? What did they find? What did they notice about those hives? They were uh, crashed and vanished because of the African bees. Yeah. That's right. In fact, many of them that they find are actually empty. Um, Jose, I just muted you for the moment because there's a bit of background noise coming. But whenever you want to speak, you can just unmute your microphone. Um, OK. Next, what we're going to do is head to an article. Um, it was in the class materials. But I'll give you the link to it. Whoops. I'll give you the link to it. Uh, in just a second. Whoops, I lost my link. There it is. It's in the chat box for you. So this is our mini lesson plan. And when you open that up, you'll see the headline for our little article. And uh, I see that we have been joined by Nihan. How are you doing, Nihan? Hi, Ryan. I'm doing great. How about Welcome you? to the class. Thank you. Yes, I'm doing well. Happy to, uh, to have you here with us today. Have you been following the class so far? Not so much, but I will catch you. Okay, you'll catch up. Well, we're just about to open this document that I've given you the link to in the chat box. Okay. And it's got a brief article that we're going to talk about. Now, first of all, before we read through the actual news item, we want to focus in on the headline. So, Alberto, would you just read the headline for us? Yes. 30,000 beans attack a bull, kill ponies. Okay. So that's what appeared in the newspaper. Now, beside the headline, you'll see something that says true and false. So what we want to do is predict what we think the story will be about, based on, only on the headline itself. So thinking about that headline, true or false, number, question A, a couple was attacked by bees while they watched a horror movie. Do you think that statement is true or false, Juanjo? <laughs> well, I think it's false. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see. Number, uh, number B, <laughs> letter B. True or false? A pony attacked the bees. Nihan. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, attack. Uh, yes, it's true. 
You think that the pony attacked the bees? Oh, it's not an indirect speech. No, it's false. Okay. The bees attacked the pony. Okay, that's your prediction. All right, we'll find out. C. The woman saw something she thought was a bright white cloud. Do you think that's going to be true or false, Selma? That's absolutely true. Okay. Remember your answers to these because then when we go through the, the article, we'll find out if we were right or wrong. Uh -huh. D. There were so many bees it went dark like it was nighttime. Alberto, do you think that's going to be true or false? Yeah, I think it's true because there are many of them. Okay. Very good. E. It is likely that a swimming pool saved the couple from death. Juanjo, what do you say? Mm. Probably false. False. Okay. F. The man had 250 stings on his arms, neck, and and head. Nihan, do you think that will be true or false? Oh, if we only consider with the uh, highlight, uh, with the title, mm -hmm. I don't know. Take a guess. The, the man had uh, on his arms, neck, and uh, it could be true, yeah. Okay. G. The bees tried to attack the couple while they were in the water. What do you say, Selma? That's true. All right. And finally, the ponies could not get away from the swarm. Alberto? Yes, I think it's true. OK. Very good. So we'll find out shortly. But before we do, we want to look at a little bit of vocabulary that's going to appear in the article. So you'll see here there is a section, Synonym Match. So what we want to do is uh, go through the words on the left-hand side and match them up with a synonym or a word that means the same thing from the right-hand column. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Juanjo, you get number one. Usually. I have to right. find a synonym. That's right. Okay. Uh, normally? Excellent. Very good. Uh, Nihan, you have number two. Happens. Occurs. Right Gee. on. Excellent. Selma, number three? Nightmare. Uh, bad dream. Yes, good. And number four to Alberto. Normal, ordinary. Excellent, excellent. Number six, Juanjo. Number six? Or yes. Uh, Did I? Oh, I passed one. You're right. Number five. Realized. Um, complete. Mm, okay. Sure. Uh, anyone uh, ha anyone uh, have another idea for realized? Understood. Yeah. Okay, yes, that's right. When you realize something, it means you come to understand it. Okay. Um, could someone put it in a sentence for us? Realized. Just type it in the chat box. I hear some typing, so something's coming. <laughs> okay, Nihan. I real I realized my gas was running out. Very good. Very good. So do you understand the meaning now, Juanjo? Uh, I realized. Oh, 
Okay, okay. The same of I understand. Yeah. Uh, my guess was ah, from, uh, okay, okay, okay. I understood. Yeah. And then no Selma, bees. Selma's got her sentence. I realized that the Americanized bees escaped to to Brazil. Okay, from Brazil, okay. we would say from Brazil in 1979. Alberto, I realize you are my best friend. Very good. Very nice sentence. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to our synonyms. Number six would be Nihan. Luckily. E. Fortunately. Very good. Number seven, Selma? Counted. Uh, added up. Counted, added up. Yes. Okay. Very good. Number eight to Alberto? Yeah. Dorofin. Frightening. Good. Number nine, Juanjo? Escape. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go out. Not exactly. Uh, break, break out. Run away. No, you have to choose. Yeah, the number C. Break out is possible. Um, escape or break? Yeah, that would work. Yes, but do you see one in the list? On the uh, that would work instead. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't, I don't, I didn't see the list. I, I think we we have to to invent to made up. A, a, ah, no, no, okay, no, okay. Up, to, to know another. Ah, okay. It's easier than I thought. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. I now you you people are know every every synonymous. Okay, this is in the other column. <laughs> 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 okay. Keep um, run away. Good for you. Okay, Excellent. It's easier. It's easier. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and we just have one more Nihan. Passed away. H died. Exactly. Okay. So now that you we've gone through those words, let's go through the article itself. And uh, so let's have a couple of readers. Maybe, Selma, could you read the first paragraph for us? Uh-huh, okay, sure. Uh, being attacked by killer bees usually only happens in horror movies or nightmares. For a couple in Texas, and the nightmare turned into reality on Wednesday, on Wednesday night. Christian uh, Bulgarian uh, 44 and her and her boyfriend were in their garden exercising, exercising their two ponies. Okay, okay. Is that that's a paragraph break there? Mhm. Mm okay. So then uh, we can have somebody else take it up from Mrs. Beauregard. Uh, maybe we could invite Alberto to to read the rest of that paragraph. Yes. Miss Beauregard told reporters that everything was normal until one of the ponies started kidding and jumping. The animal was very frightened about something. Suddenly, she saw a dark cloud in the sky and she realized that it was a swarm of bees. She said, it got all dark, like it was night time. There were so many bees. The bees attacked, attacked the couple and their horses. Very good. Excellent, Alberto. Uh, Ahmed has joined us. How are you today, Ahmed? Good, good. I'm fine. Good. Nice to see you. Haven't had you in a class for a little while. Yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> How have you been? Good, good. Just uh, focused on studying. I took the TOEFL test. Oh, how did it go? Oh, it's very well. Waiting for results. Depends all on the results. Okay, fantastic. Well, welcome to the class. Um, would you like to take, have you got the document we're reading from open? 
Um, actually, not yet. Uh, I'm, uh, I just I tried this from my cell phone. I cannot. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, just a second. Um, I'm trying to find it here. If uh, is does the chat box appear on your cell phone? No, it doesn't appear. That's that's a little bit confusing here. Um, ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Could you like pass pass me? Let's see. How can I do that? Um, have you got Google Chat? Can I use that to give you the link? No, not really. Uh, the other thing is, if you look, I have it attached to the class itself in Verbling. The class materials. Maybe you can see that link on the Verbling page. No, I can't see it. Okay. Yeah, I will try. Well, I'll just try to listen carefully. Just listen carefully then, as we have the next paragraph read. Uh, maybe Nihan could do that for us. Okay. Okay. Luckily, they had a swimming pool, so the couple jumped in. Mr. Berger was stunned over 200 times by the bees. Her boyfriend counted over 50 stings on his arms, neck, and head. The pool probably saved their lives because, she, because the bees could not attack them under the water. Good. Very good. And uh, Juanjo, could you start from there? Sure. Kristen explained how terrifying it was. She said, we were trying to stand up in the water, but every time we stuck our heads out for air, they would cover us and start sting stinging us. We were trying to breathe, and they were stinging us on the face and on the nose. Unfortunately, the two ponies could not escape escape from the bees. They got stung thousands of times. One died on the farm. The other passed away at the at the vet's clinic later that evening. One, no, we've, we, we've lost you. Can you hear me? Okay, yep. Um, just the last sentence, could you read that one more time? Okay, uh, the last is... Uh, one died on the farm, the other passed away at the, at the vet's clinic later that evening. Very good, excellent. So, this is a terrifying story, really, when you think about it. Um, Remember we did our true and false uh, questions about the article. How did we do? There was a couple of them that we got wrong. Which ones did you notice that we got wrong? Uh, I think it's uh, mine. Uh, it is likely that a swimming pool saved the couple of, from death. It's true. Okay. Very good. Very good. Any others that we got wrong? F. The man had 250 stings on his arms. Um, and the article says um, the, the woman had uh, 200 times uh, stunned and the boyfriend only 50. Okay. Very good. And I think there was one more that we got wrong. Yeah. Anyone catch what it was? The C one, I suppose. Or Numbers, the, the C. Yeah. Okay. Very good. What did the article actually say that was different? It was a, a dark cloud. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so we did very well, though, because uh, it's hard to guess what an article is going to be about just from a title, and you got almost every one of those correct. So let's talk about it. Um, how dangerous can a bee sting be? Selma? Uh, 
it's making uh, uh, the phones. Yeah, yeah, it killed them. I mean, after stinging them thousands of times, they died. So obviously, this is a serious, uh, serious thing. Um, what was your opinion of how the man and woman decided to handle the situation? Do you think they made the right decision by jumping in the water, Nihan? Um, I don't know if, uh, if they have somewhere to escape, maybe inside the home, maybe um, they, they could uh, escape uh, without any sting, but uh, if they haven't any chance uh, to get inside the home, yeah, it's uh, uh, really, um, really right idea to jump into an pool and say with the water I could do that okay so you because they were okay. pa panic panicked I guess and they only think to uh, escape somewhere and the water is a, a right uh, thing to do to jump in okay very good so you feel like though if there had been a a, a barn or a house nearby would they have been better to go in there yeah, because maybe they can save the ponies or they can call somewhere. I don't know. All but right. that that thing happens really quickly, you know. Yeah, it's true. You've got to make a snap decision in, in a situation like that. Uh, yeah. Juanjo, what do you think? What, what would you have done if it had been you? Uh, well, it's difficult because uh, you have to, to think uh, quickly. And sometimes you you don't uh, choose uh, the right uh, decision about uh, due to the panic. Uh, if you jump in into the swimming pool, uh, uh, it's uh, difficult because uh, you need uh, to breathe, and uh, you need to breathe, and you need to. to uh, extract your uh, uh, to take it to take your uh, your uh, your head your head um, and probably in that uh, in this moment the uh, uh, bees uh, uh, could uh, attack to you so it's, uh, it's it's difficult maybe the right decision will be uh, uh, to go to to the house. Okay. The house, so, yeah. so you're with Nihan. You think that the best m method would be yeah. to get inside. Now, Selma. Agree. Selma, I know you have an opinion about this too. For me, I will just cover cover my head and my faces, my face with uh, with uh, my clothes, or I will just. Uh, I was just run at as Nihan and uh, and Juan said. I mean, to mm -hmm. some enclosed areas, or it's it was as well. They people they people tell you that you can cover your uh, your body with clay because bees they do not like the clay, so they would be far away from. They won't attack you. So okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you're like near some mud, you could grab it and, and smear it on your head. Is that the idea? Uh huh. Exactly. So. Okay. Al I have Alberto. a point. Pa pardon me. Oh, please um, go ahead. We we don't know how they stay at there, and in the swimming pool, maybe they have to wait um, a twenty uh, for, uh, four hour or something. It could be dangerous, you know. Mm hmm. Yep. Maybe if they uh, get inside the house, they could reach the food, they could reach some emergency help or something. But uh, in the swimming pool, uh, I don't know how uh, they um, they lost. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting in the article. Um, Alberto, did you notice in the last paragraph of the article, what happened every time they tried to breathe? 
Uh, well, the, the bees uh, can to, to sting them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it was a pretty bad situation to be in. Yeah, true. In fact, if you do some research about the what uh, they suggest you would do in this situation, they say not to go in the water if you can avoid it. Because apparently these Africanized bees will wait above the water until you come up. They're, they have this instinctive wisdom to know that you're going to have to come out of that water at some point. And so they suggest either get inside a building, just like some of you said, or even just keep running in a straight line as, and don't stop running because uh, they'll follow you for up, upwards of a quarter of a mile. But eventually you can outrun them and you won't get stung very much while you're running. Yeah, perhaps they have an area to leave, a short area, yeah, and it's right. Exactly, exactly. So there's your, uh, there's your answer as far as what to do. So in the few minutes that we have left, let's just talk about other dangerous animals. So uh, Selma, what do you think is the most dangerous animal and why? Uh, for me, I think there is no dangerous animals. I think that uh, if only you uh, provoke the animal, it can attack you. But if you stay away, uh, away from them, they won't uh, do anything harmful to you. Okay. But let's suppose you find yourself in a situation where you're, just, you're near these animals. Which one do you think would be the most dangerous? Uh, I would go with with the the snakes. Uh, I mean the cobras and also the leopards. They are they are really dangerous animals, especially here in in Africa. They can prey on you, so you they, you always have to to stay as far as possible from them. Okay, leopards. Okay, very good. Interesting choice. Ah, that's, that's, uh -huh. okay. How about you, Nihan? What would your pick be? Mm. The whole animals uh, can be dangerous in the in the deserted uh, uh, forest. Maybe bears, maybe wolves. I don't know, but. Uh, in the cities or uh, in near the cities, there, there isn't any dangerous animals. Maybe some snakes. You have some sna some dangerous snakes in Turkey. Mm, I don't know their spices, but uh, when you are in the countryside, uh, the people always afraid of snakes. Okay, yeah. My mom's terrified of snakes. She's got a phobia. Yeah. <laughs> so she would definitely pick those ones. How about you, Juanjo? What would your pick be? Well, uh, it, it depends on the place uh, you are. Uh, uh, for example, if you are in a, a desert or uh, another rainforest or another place, uh, it's a, a competition between snakes Scorpions and uh, <laughs> Iraq. <laughs> okay, okay. Scorpions. Let, we've had yeah, we've had scorpions. Probably it's one of the scorpions most dangerous. Nihan said snakes. So we got leopards, scorpions, snakes, and Alberto. What is your pick? Uh, I have heard uh, about hippopotamus uh, that causes uh, a lot of deaths in Africa because uh, of, uh, they they can swim, but they they are not uh, seen by people who are in boats, for example, and then it's uh, dangerous for for them because they are big, uh, they are fat, and they can. Uh, uh, they can uh, they can do the the, the boat or the or even the the 
I don't know, the ship uh, can, can break and, and uh, the people uh, can die in the, in the, in the water. Yeah? yeah, yeah, I've seen documentaries about them. They're incredibly strong and very aggressive, the males of yeah. that uh, species. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's I'm going to give you my... It, but... it, it is a fantastic animal. When I was a yeah. kid, I had a book so, all about them. A rhino, rhinoceront. Rhinoceront, can I say it in English? Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros, yeah, sorry. Rhinoceros is one of my favorite. I'm trying to remember how to spell that, but anyway. Okay, very good. So, I'm going to say the mosquito because I hate the mosquito <laughs> and you know what uh, I think around the world it causes more deaths from like malaria and other other yeah. diseases that it transmits than than any other creature so it's a very dangerous and it would be great if we could get rid of them but that's not likely to happen so it was a great class uh, we I had some more material for us, but maybe we can save that for another time. We can come back to talk about animals again. Um, tomorrow, I've got a class. It's another one on etiquette and manners. This time, we're going to talk about when we're shopping. So, Mr. Bean is going to help us. Mr. Bean is going to help us to learn how to have good manners when we're shopping. So, I hope you guys can uh, join me for that class. It should be a lot of laughs, and uh, I look forward to hearing your input on what you like to see when you're shopping from the other customers. So I really enjoyed your participation today. Uh, feel free to post on my Facebook page your thoughts and comments, suggestions for future classes you'd like to see. And uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.